All right, hello everybody. I am Elizabeth Rowden, the program manager for Art Walla, and I am pleased to welcome you all to our first talk with fiber artist, Christy Kuhn. Christy is a Southern Oregon-based fiber artist who, having studied engineering and after a career as a woodworker, has turned her focus to sculptural composition and handmade felt. This makes her the perfect artist to work on the Exquisite Gorge Project. The Exquisite Gorge Project was developed by Curator of Education at Mary Hill Museum of Art, Luis Palermo, and features 13 regional fiber artists working with communities along 220 miles of the Columbia River from the Willamette Confluence to the Snake River Confluence. Each artist is designing an original artwork in collaboration with their community partner and community members from their section of the river. Each artwork will portray a section of the river itself and will connect to the next section. The project is inspired by the surrealist art practice Ex Exquisite Corpse, where participants take turns drawing sections of the body on a piece of paper folded to hide each successive contribution. When unfolded, a whole body is revealed to show each contribution. In the case of the Exquisite Gorge Project 2, the Columbia River will become the body that unifies the collaboration between artists and communities, revealing a flowing 66-foot work that tells 10 conceptual stories of the Columbia River and its people. A culminating festival of fiber arts will be held Saturday, August 6 at Mary Hill Museum of Art, where each freestanding section will be brought together to reveal the continuous sculpture. Throughout the talk, if you have any questions for Christy, drop them in the chat and we will do a Q&A when she is done. And without further ado, I'll turn this over to Christy. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, great to be here and thanks to everyone for joining. Uh, thanks to our Walla for partnering up with me on this project and to the Mary Hill Museum of Art and Louise Palermo for uh, creating this great project and, uh, and the vision behind it. Uh, so, so I'm coming to you from Ashland, Oregon, uh, pretty far away from your section of the river there in Walla Walla. Um, so it's a great to be able to connect and, and see your faces and get to know the people in this community, which is a big part of the project. Um, so, so I'm a felt maker mostly, uh, and I have a, some experience uh, in, with woodworking. So I bring that to my work a little as well. And most of you are fiber artists are familiar with what felt is, but I'll just give you a, a brief kind of introduction to uh, felt and making of felt. So it is uh, a wool that I'm using and uh, just four ingredients basically required to make felt and that's wool and soap and water and the energy of my hands. So by uh, using warm soapy water on the wool, uh, the scales on the wool will kind of release from the core of the fiber. And then by rubbing those fibers together with my hands, uh, I can tangle them. And the harder and more aggressive I rub, the more they tangle together uh, and then finally become a dense matted textile called felt. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of the work that I do just so you have an idea of where I'm coming from when I approach this project. Uh, so I do, um, you know, nature, it's just, the work is inspired by nature. Um, the water that, the, that I'm working in, uh, wind, sand, movement of these materials. Uh, I'm working with uh, some larger scale pieces lately. So I'm creating installations for uh, residences and hotels. Um, the work is very textural. Uh, let's see if I go here. Uh, this is an early piece, but it's just showing you uh, kind of some playfulness of working with the wool fiber. Uh, within the texture that I create in the felt. Um, that movement, again, kind of calling the, the water, the movement of sand through these pieces. Uh, this is a single, each one of these that you've seen are a single piece of handmade felt. Uh, the scale of this piece is about four, 
uh, just under four feet by about five feet wide. Uh, and I also incorporate other materials into the felt. So the, the wool fibers can tangle into woven structures. So here that gold that you see is a, a very heavy silk fabric and I've tangled the wool into that silk. And when it is finished, it reveals a really nice detail, um, you know, reminiscent of um, the grain of wood, or even in this case, uh, to me, this is uh, sun glitter uh, on water. So that reflection of the sun when it hits the top surface of water. Um, the work requires a lot of water and physical energy at the scale that I'm working at. So uh, I'm very connected to the pieces themselves and to water. So I think a lot about water in the work that I do and I see the work in water which is why uh, when I was invited to do this project, uh, it really appealed to me because obviously of the river and, uh, and then getting into thoughts of maybe, you know, working on the river, having the felt piece that I create for this project somehow directly uh, in the water there at some point. Uh, I like to put the, the felt pieces in any body of water that's around me, not just when I'm working on it in the tub, but this is a pond behind my house, uh, just to explore the movement that happens naturally in this uh, larger body of water. So, uh, so that's what I do. And, uh, and for this project, uh, what we're doing is we're creating really large scale three-dimensional fiber art pieces um, that will come together like Elizabeth was explaining uh, and create one long piece of art at the Mary Hill Museum in August. Um, so the pieces that we're creating are um, three-dimensional, six feet by four feet by four feet. And the frame that I have behind me, I just assembled yesterday. It's on legs. Uh, so below you can see 21 inch legs. And I'll talk a little more about that uh, in a few minutes about the frame and, and how these pieces will kind of come together and relate to each other. But what I wanted to share uh, first was uh, the project from 2019 that Lou did with printmakers. And, just to show you kind of how uh, this evolved from the other project. So they have a great, some great resources on their website, which uh, is probably linked to in the Artwalla website. Uh, right now, I'll just take you here. My in Zoom. Am I leaving the meeting? No. Okay, so this is um, from the catalog that was produced of the 2019 event. And, uh, you know, if you have questions about this, I'm sure Lou can jump in at the end of um, my talk and share a little more about it. But what you can see here, uh, you have again, 10 sections, 11, maybe 11 sections of river, like we're doing again. And each artist had a four by six um, block print that they made and those all came together. So uh, we're using the same scale that they were working with from this first project, but we're translating it into a three-dimensional piece and also now using fiber instead of, um, you know, a more solid medium. And it was uh, an incredible success. And it's really exciting to see these pieces and how it all came together uh, in the community participation that there's this steamroller that you see in this photo in the upper left. And that's Lou driving that, I think. And here they are assembling uh, those prints into one long uh, artwork of the Columbia River. And uh, also when I'm looking through this, I can see uh, my, the section of river section 10 that I have and how the artist uh, worked with that section in the previous project. 
so this has been a helpful resource for me as well. Artists addressed issues, uh, you know, sometimes relating to the history of the section of river that they were working on. Uh, in this case, it's a geologic history, uh, which is very interesting uh, up in your area. So I, I just wanted to share this with you and invite you to check that out um, to get a, a better idea of the scope of this project and, and what it evolved from. So, um, so what we have here though is a three-dimensional piece that's going to be made out of fiber and exhibited outside. Uh, and we're kind of working with the original parameters uh, that the, the printmakers had. So we have, I have a section of the river and I have coordinates where my, river, my section connects to the other artist's piece, the artist uh, in section nine coming before me. And this is where my river will begin. And some art will happen in here. And this is where my river will come off the end of the frame. So when I built my frame here yesterday, I marked out uh, just to share with you, to give you a better visually, uh, repre uh, represent this more visually, uh, where this is where my river will end. And this is where my river will begin. And each of these will be at 36 inches high. So depending on the legs and the height of the legs that the artist chooses, uh, the river will be in a different place. So my, my legs right now are at 21 inches, which means for my river to be at 36 inches, okay. I'm going to be right here and I can mark that. So we can see the point of my river coming off the frame. And 36 inches coming in from section nine behind me. So if my legs are shorter, uh, my, my artwork uh, will have the river a little higher. And this is to be determined as I'm designing the piece. Um, and, and so inside of this will be anything that I decide to create. And it can be representational of the landscape or, or not, but it, it does have to have this point of the river exit and the river entering on the other side. Um, and so what's below and above or even coming outside of the frame is up to the individual artist. Um, I am section, I am the end of this project. So my piece may flow out uh, beyond the framework here. I'm, I just don't know yet exactly what's gonna happen here. I know a lot of things, but I don't know uh, some of the final details. Um, so some things that I've been considering for this project uh, are the landscape and the geology, um, the materials that I might use to evoke some of that. Um, and what I'm trying to also really consider is the history of the region because I don't, because I don't live there, uh, it's all pretty new to me, not new when I read the history, but uh, you know, just the research that I'm doing to, to learn about what's going on in the region. And this has been a really uh, helpful book. Uh, beautiful essays and stories and a lot about the history and a lot about the geology of the region. So I've had this on my table quite a bit. And, uh, and then in the last couple of weeks, we have, because we have the COVID again, uh, the surge, I've spent a lot of time out of my studio and in another room working because I have assistants uh, in one of the rooms. And so sometimes when they're working, I'll come over to the other space to spend my time 
so we can unmask because it can be uh, challenging if you're felting or you're doing a physical job to wear the mask. So when I'm working in the other room, I set up uh, my silk painting frames and I was just, it was just really therapeutic uh, to let the sun in. It's been really beautiful here this January, letting the sun in the back room and painting some silks. And I realized that everything I've been painting is this uh, skyline and sunset on the cover of the book. So um, it's coming through. I'm just not sure where it'll all end up in the piece. And you can see uh, some of the silks in the back here. You can also see on the board. The map of my uh, of my river here. So this is this is where I will begin, and this is where I'm coming off the end. Um, it was helpful to see when I was showing you the prints from 2019, uh, the artist that was working with this section of the river, instead of having the Columbia come off the end of her frame, she actually had the Snake River come off her frame. And I thought that was uh, quite interesting and a reasonable approach because there is such a great bend in the river there. And it allowed her to, to capture more of the flow of the river that way. Um, so let's see, some, some of the challenges uh, so far with this piece. Uh, oh, I love building, as most of you know. So I like this uh, building the frame. And I like the idea of figuring out how to create this floating piece or you know, how to build the structure and support the, a textile inside of there. Uh, but what I, what I did was uh, I received this frame last month, shipped down from Lou at the Mary Hill, uh, who built all of these for the 11 artists and sent them out. And mine sat here for a while before I got to building it. And the idea was to have it built for our meeting today. So I did it yesterday. And uh, when I went to build this, the wood that was sent uh, was a little, a little not quite as refined as even though I'm still using two by twos, I just went and got different two by twos because they're a little sharp on the corners uh, and they weren't quite as tight fitting in the joints as I wanted. So because I have a wood shop and I was able to uh, recreate this frame, I, I went ahead and did that. Uh, so it's just a little softer and more pleasing for me to work with. Um, I can use this wood for, um, for my other um, pallets and crates and things. So it's not like I'm not using this wood, but I'm just for this time, for the time being, working with something that's a little softer. Um, I'm probably gonna paint this. Uh, I might be drilling into it or finding other ways to attach uh, cabling system. I'm not quite sure, uh, but for mounting and hanging. Um, so that's one thing that I've been working through. The other thing is uh, in talking with uh, Art Walla and especially with Tricia, who's there about the installation of this piece that will happen before it moves to the Mary Hill. Um, as you can see, it's really big. Well, it's gotta fit through the doors. It's gotta fit through my doors, uh, which it won't. Uh, I have to disassemble this and I'll reassemble it in the back room where I can work on it and uh, build the piece. And I have uh, double doors where I can move it out without taking it apart again at that point. But once it gets out of my studio and onto the truck and up to Art Walla to get into their gallery, uh, they need 51 and a half inches to get it in the gallery doors and they've got 48. So uh, these are some of the other challenges that we're figuring out. Um, let's see. So those are the technical issues and things that we're thinking about and working on right now. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do was to invite uh, the community there, uh, the Arts Walla community, and put it out there to um, 
you know, other people who are not necessarily fiber artists in the region. But what I want to start collecting are stories of your experience living on the river where you do. Uh, so I've created a form on my website uh, that has, it's just a little questionnaire where you can submit uh, your story. I'd like to know like how long, if you're answering these questions, how long you've lived in the region. Um, do you use the river for recreation? Is it, does it affect your job? Uh, did, did your ancestors live there? And what are some stories that you may have to share that you know, come from them. And I'll just uh, screen share again and show you how simple this is to jump on and start participating. Well, okay. So if you just go to my website, which I'm sure is linked uh, from the Mary Hill or from Art Walla somewhere, and up on the top is Exquisite Gorge 22. And this talks uh, just briefly about the project. Again, repeat of what we've just been through and some links. And then a simple questionnaire. How do you interact with the river? Uh, what about the complicated history uh, of your region? Uh, how do, do you think about that? Does it affect you? Do you acknowledge it? Uh, and then, you know, what are some other stories or any other information that you have that you would like to share with me? Um, just plan to take this and actually include these stories. I mean, it's good for me to consider but I actually have a plan of like presenting them. So I don't wanna reveal all my details right now, but uh, it's really important for me to get uh, some, of, some of your history and uh, how you relate to the river into this piece. And at some point uh, I hope to, I plan to invite participation on a small scale, um, you know, creation of a possibly a felted piece. It doesn't, but it doesn't have to be um, small token items that I would like to include in this piece as well. But that will come probably in another two months. Uh, so we'll do this uh, short Zoom uh, meeting again in probably a month and a half. And I'll give you an update on where I'm at and we'll, we'll go from there. So, uh, now I'd just like to open it up to questions and, and comments and definitely Lou, I uh, invite you to share anything uh, as it is your brainchild. Uh, and thank everyone for being here. It's really an exciting project. Uh, it's a big project and uh, it's an honor to be included. So take it away, Elizabeth or Lou or questions, uh, I can, you can unmute yourselves if you have questions. So I was just gonna say really quickly, since many of you are felters in the group, uh, one of the goals of this project is to take artists, fiber artists, and to push them in directions that they have never gone before. How are we doing, Christy? Are we doing that? Are we pushing you in new directions? Oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> yeah. I love but it. But also to give the people who are emerging and community artists uh, a push too, and to make you start thinking big or differently in a new medium, in a new way. And uh, I really wanna thank our partner Artwalla um, for, for making that happen. So the interaction that you all have with Christy, uh, who was on the cover of, was it Craft Magazine or Craft in America? Uh, it was American craft. American craft. I knew those words were included. So, um, so yes. And I, I want to just reiterate one more thing, and that's to uh, invite everyone down on August 6th, the day of the big bringing together all sections 
Uh, and we're going to have a sheep to shawl, which many of you have experienced before, uh, where we're going to shear sheep and comb wool and spin into yarn and knit and crochet and do other felting. And uh, we'll have looms there for weaving. So you might try something new. We're really going to push uh, push fiber arts and and help communities understand better why they should buy that scarf made uh, by an artist. It may cost a tiny bit more, but it is a unique, wonderful work of art. We have to educate our community that not everything came from Walmart. Yeah. So thank you for this opportunity. Now I hope you have your questions loaded. <laughs> I have a question. Um, I'm Vicki Hughes. I'm from Desert Fiber Arts in Kennewick, Washington. Um, looking at the frame, are all the frames made exactly the same or are the leg heights different? All of the, the leg heights will be different depending okay. on where the artist uh, places their river. And so when all of these come together uh, in August at the Mary Hill, what, what the goal is, is for the river to be at 36 inches. So the legs will be adjusted there. So the okay. artists may have legs on their frame before that, uh, but when we get to Mary Hill, things will be changed because the ground won't necessarily be even because uh, you know we're human and we mismeasure. Uh, so when we get there, they'll all come together. Wonderful, we thank you. There, we will be there with a saw and drill and hammers and engineers. And we, we sent everybody the same leg length in their creation to make it a little more comfortable for the artists. Gotcha, thank you. So Vicki is part of Desert Fiber Arts who is section eight, right? Or yeah, I think so. Yes. Yeah, we're from, um, the John Day River to Roosevelt in Arlington. Fantastic. Yeah. And her artist is Ophir uh, Elboer, and Ophir is originally from Israel, so we're a international group. Yes. I couldn't Charles? understand very yeah. well. It was your your voice was muffled. Right. Yeah, it's my I've had um my headphones aren't doing so good right now. Um, and I'm just looking forward to seeing what y'all come up with. It's a, it's a very gorgeous um, idea, and so it, it's a new genre for me. So each of these each of these artworks will be uh, di displayed with the community partner for a month before they then go to the Mary Hill and they're displayed together for a month and then they go back to the artist and so I think that'll be interesting too to see what happens to these pieces after the event uh, will they be reconstructed into something a little easier to fit through the door? Or will they, uh, will we find storage for them uh, because they can't be altered? Uh, it'll, I think it'll be a really interesting story that continues beyond the project. This project will have associated with it a publication. So my question to you, Christy, is do you think it'd be possible to add one question on your questionnaire to ask if it would be poss to, possible to pub use uh, a, a sentence or a portion of people's personal stories of the river in the publication? Sure. Yeah, that's a great idea. There'll also be a video. So there is a question in the chat. So Esther asked, will each artist have the same color palette? Uh, no, uh, each artist is just doing what they do. And, uh, and the only rule that they have is the location of the river and where it will meet up with their neighboring sections location of the river. Um, color materials, 
going outside of fiber, so uh, it's not re you know restricted to just fiber, but uh, that is the main element, and that is you know we all work with fiber, so that's why we were brought together on this piece. Um, yeah, and, I think that, and that's the nature. That's the nature of the exquisite corpse is you don't know what's going to happen on either side of you, and boom, that's it. You know, you don't know. And so the only thing that matters is that they connect perfectly at the uh, mathematical location that we gave you. It's all measuring. So Lori White asks, what are the physical locations of eight, nine, and 10? Um, so I can give you a rough estimate. Uh, I, I know that uh, eight, is just past Mary Hill Museum. And it sort of is, the partner for that is Desert, Fi Fine, uh, Desert Fiber Arts, they're our community partner. Um, nine is a, is a big stretch. And our partner for that are the Confederated Tribes for the Umatilla Indian Reservation. And so, uh, and, then, and then comes section 10, which Christy defined, but they're not all the same length. And they, the sections were divided up by a riverboat captain who did it based on population and interesting uh, um, landscapes or whatever. And we just let him pick and choose what he wanted in terms of the section. Also part of the haphazardness of an exquisite corpse. So Charles asked, and does each piece fit within the 3D frame? If it wants to. If it wants to come off the 3D, the 3D frame, it can. Um, but the only thing that I am absolutely uh, um, very strict about is that the river flows on and the river flows off where we give you the coordinates so that it does connect to the next frame. And then anything goes. Yeah, and uh, that's one thing that I still, even though it's it's very precise, it I think will be a challenge because of the three dim the dimensionality. So the river, you know, the top of the river, or the bottom of the river, or the middle of the river hitting that point. We don't care what happens in the middle, though. I don't care what happens in the middle. That river can go to the ground. It can go to the sky. It can disappear. I don't care. As long as it flows on the frame and off the frame where we indicate so that it lines up with, its, with the people on either side. That's all we care about. And, right. and artists have to also think about Christy's lucky uh, in that hers is uh, number, in number 10. And people will view hers from three sides. And many of the other artists, so for example, section nine, section eight, they're only being viewed from the left and the right because they're connected. And so artists have to consider that. Um, this will be photographed from the sides, but it'll also be photographed with a drone from above uh, and viewed that way. People might use the space below anything. It'll be really interesting to see what happens. Artists are incredible people. Christy, I, I had a question for you too. In looking at all of your pieces, they all seem very landscape uh, uh, inspired to me. What is your biggest inspiration in the rest of your art outside of this one? Uh... Mostly what happens, especially in the newer pieces, uh, and those would be, um, you know, if I have, if I'm constructing the felt on a light fabric and then sculpting the finished piece, uh, which is like the, the first photo that I showed that I was standing by uh, the sculpture, the, well, the piece on the wall. So those are, they're just inspired, They're, they happen really quickly. It's all about the movement of the materials mm -hmm. and uh, my experience, again, working with those materials in the water and, and seeing those undulations form and kind of playing with the push and pull of the felt uh, because it's, you know, it's connected, 
but it's not solid. Um, yeah, it's all just very fluid. So there isn't a specific inspiration, although sometimes, you know, I may have a client and or a project and, and they do want landscape. So I will, you know, research the, uh, the region uh, around, around that, wherever the installation is going to, to live and look for something. Uh, yeah, it's again, just movement in the rocks. Maybe there's uh, some flora or, you know, grasses. Um, I've, I've had ferns in my backyard. So some pieces have been inspired just by the movement of the plants. Um, but it's not anything necessarily that specific. Water, water is a big one. So Karen asks, how much exposure will there be to the elements during the exhibit at Mary Hill? All of them. Full exposure to all of the elements. It'll be outside and we don't expect it to rain um, that time of year, but it gets pretty hot and windy. Uh, yeah. And I've had a test piece up since October with just regular yarn. And uh, it's been out since then. And it's, it's been blown, it's been rained on, it's been snowed on. And so far, so good. It still looks perfect. This is uh, Laurie. Does Artwalla have dates yet for when the uh, exhibit will start here or openings or anything like that? Or is it too uh, premature for that? So I, I see Trisha unmuted herself, but um, the plan originally was to show at Combine. At this point, with how big this piece is, we don't think we'll be able to get it in, but tentatively the dates are from the beginning of July, so not the first, but the following week. Um, the 7th. Yeah, the 7th. So July 7th through whenever it needs to leave in early August to be there in time to be installed on the 6th. And Christy, I don't know if we can, can I um, reveal that you might have another piece or two in the gallery? Or should I save that? No reason for secrets. Um, the exciting thing I think is that we've asked the Combine Art Collective, asked Christy if she'd be willing to also show some of her other 2D on the wall pieces or maybe even some of her little cool 3D potty kind of pieces. Um, in our gallery as and be sort of a featured artist in the gallery as well. So our hope is that we have both. Um, I have full faith in Lou that she is going to solve the problem of getting it through our door. <laughs> um, but if not, we'll have it someplace public where people can see it. We've got a couple of ideas about that and we'll communicate that. Um, Lou wants us to talk about possible workshops we might have or workshops that you already have, Christy, that are coming up. Yeah, yeah, I know. The idea was hopefully to get up there and do a workshop. Uh, so at this point, you know, the most, most likely if we're able to do something like that, it would be uh, Trisha and I talked about before that installation in July and doing something, you know, on that trip up. So maybe uh, just a sort of felt together community felting day, which doesn't need to be treated as a, a workshop, or I would prefer for it not to be treated as a full workshop, although, you know, I can, I would like to, um, you know, initiate the project and, and teach a simple project, but it doesn't need to be a formal workshop. Um, just to open for community members to join in casually and experience uh, the magic of felting. So that is, that's what we're looking at right now. It's just, uh, you know, COVID has been hard and the workload has been pretty heavy down here. So it's been difficult to plan something uh, in addition to these other trips, again, July up there for several days, 
and August uh, back up to Mary Hill. So uh, watch for that, you know, sign up for the Art Wallet newsletter and uh, you can stay up to date on whatever it is we come up with through that. And possibly we do like a, a Zoom felt together or, you know, I'd like to do another Zoom presentation when this piece is further along. Um, and we'll just go from there. I, I have a quick uh, question about the project, which is if the felt is a different color than your you know, standard sort of natural white, how is that, do you actually dye the fibers or do you buy the fibers uh, in those colors? I do some of both. Uh, so I do, I do some silk dyeing uh, and silk is often integrated into the wool. I, I don't do a ton of wool dyeing unless it's maybe the finished piece might be dyed, um, but on like a piece, so a piece like this, this has layers of blue and gray and black and those are all commercially dyed wools. And this is a commercially dyed silk that is that highlight in the middle. Uh, and what I do is I layer those materials to, to get to new colors instead of dyeing it. Um, this, yeah, it's just, I am not set up to do dyeing on the scale uh, for the, that scale for the work that I'm doing. So if I'm doing dyeing, it's usually for smaller pieces or uh, a small part that might be integrated into a piece. Uh, like the silks that you see behind me, I don't have the best example, but uh, the blue on this flower is silk that's felted onto the surface of white wool. So there's a lot that can be done in changing the color of the whole piece by just working with one element, like the, another fiber or another fabric on the surface. Christy, can you can you felt objects into your it can felt can you do that with felting? Of course, yeah. So I can felt around objects and encapsulate them um, with with fabrics. I'm felting through the fabrics to trap them the, through the weave of fabrics. Um, I don't really have a sample of anything here, but yes, I can wrap the wool around objects, mm -hmm. and I have to give it room to shrink because that's the thing about uh, wool, it tangles and then it tangles deep more and more and more and it, it needs to be able to shrink around an object to really become uh, felted around it. So you start bigger and you shrink the, the wool into felt around an object. So Esther and Charles, you work in different media. Are you ready to become felters now? <laughs> I would love it, but I don't know that I have room in my house for one more pro, one more uh, style of working. <laughs> Start I would love to learn to felt though. It's, it looks so exciting. Yeah, it's gorgeous stuff. I especially love that flower that you have. That's, uh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I do. I, I've had, uh, I go to the flowers on and off, but it is that it's that small piece that I can work on in the kitchen. So you don't need a lot of space. Uh, you don't need a big studio. You can take it home. Um, and it's been one of those things that I just revisit um, every now and then throughout the years. What, what's the largest piece you've done? Mm, well, six and a half feet by nine, nine almost 10 feet. Uh, what I've started to do is work in sections. Mm -hmm. So I've started to make, you know, I'll make, uh, I'll design it, make a pattern, which is pretty big because again, felt will shrink, um, you know, 30 to 50%. So you lay out the wool and then in that stage, I'll decide, you know, how can I cut this into smaller pieces, make a puzzle out of it, and then do the felting and reassemble it. Uh, onto the final panel because physically to wet felt something that large is, um, is just, it's, 
is a lot of physical work and almost impossible for one person. I have a project for a vineyard, a winery here in the Willamette Valley that I, sh let's see, well, we're installing the end of June and then we're bringing your piece up the 1st of July. So it'll be a busy spring and early summer, but that piece is eight feet by, uh, I think about 24 feet, three panels. Uh, so that's divided into three panels and on each of those panels, it will probably be more than one section of felt uh, to create the artwork. Is it safe to say that your fingers are always wrinkled? Oh my gosh, sometimes they're such raisins. <laughs> well, I also, you know, I'm sure several of the other felters have experienced that you you can rub through your skin. So it's not just wrinkling, but you know, if your hands are wet and soapy and you're rubbing the wool and you just, uh, you just rub and rub through your skin. So I do wear gloves for a lot of it. If anybody is interested in actually uh, seeing the process of how she gets to some of this, she did a really great um, presentation last Saturday to the Northwest Design Craftsman. Northwest Designer Craftsman. Yeah, and we'll put a link on it. Uh, Artwalla has an exquisite gorge uh, page and we'll put a link to that, but it's really fascinating. I just found it like, oh my God. Yeah, so, I would love to see that. Yeah, so artwalla.com and then just go to the Exquisite Gorge link and we'll put it on there in the, maybe by the first, first Tuesday or Wednesday next week or whenever Elizabeth thinks she can get it up there. I've got but, a link from my website too. Yeah, so it's hosted on their YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, I, so that's why today I didn't go too much into that because I presented quite a bit last week. And Yeah, but it's it's a great compliment to what you just did. Thanks. Here. Much. Thank so. you. Elizabeth, this is going on the YouTube channel too as well, right? So we don't have a YouTube channel yet. Um, I'm going to be doing that this week and making one for us. And then um, this will be going up on our YouTube channel along with any future talks that we have with Christy. And obviously we're gonna keep everybody up to date with our newsletter um, on our social media pages um, and keeping all of this uh, out there for you guys. And Mary Hill's website will also have all these links as well. And not only these links, but uh, if you want to know what's going on with other artists in other sections. Um, Elizabeth, do you mind if I go really quickly through yeah. the sections? So um, we'll have a frontispiece that will be crocheted. Uh, section one is going to be quilted. Uh, section two, uh, the artist is working with the environmental studies sciences in at Lewis and Clark and it will be recycled materials that represent uh, climate change. Uh, section three is going to be natural materials that grow along the banks of the river. Uh, section four is another felted uh, another felcher but he felt uh, using acrylic and rolled felt. Uh, five is a weaver someone who uh, is from originally from Oaxaca and his grandfather and great-grandfather and great-great-grandfather were all weavers. And so they weave in a traditional style. Um, we have a, an artist from Romania and she's gonna be working with fabrics uh, in, in, and Romanian symbolic designs. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, Jessica Lavador who is a basket weaver and she'll be incorporating baskets into her design. Uh, Ophir Elbor is a fashion designer and she's going to be using recycled fashion in her design. Um, and did I miss anybody? Carol. Christy, who did I miss? 
Carol Hazel Drake. Oh my gosh, Carol Hazel Drake, Art. who's a quilter, and um, she uses ceramic designs in her quilts. Wow. Yeah. So all of these artists with all their different materials are gonna come together into one uh, uh, corpse, being the river, one continuous idea kind of gives you um, hope that we can come together with all these different materials. Maybe we can come together as people too, right? So, yay. Great, it's really exciting, Lou. And, and you can find about all the other sections on our website. Uh, and I will say you'll find out even more starting next week because we just got a new website and a new server and we're working out the chunks, um, but it'll be up and running well by next week. So if you want to know what's going on uh, and just check in and we'll link to Artwalla as well. Okay. Well, <laughs> looks like we're out of questions and uh, we've had a, a good hour here. Mm -hmm. So just want to thank you all again for joining and Elizabeth for hosting. Thank you, Christy, for having this talk with us. It's been really fun and very interesting. And uh, watch for that next meeting in another uh, month and a half or so. Yeah, thanks for letting me join now. This was great. Thank you so much. Always nice to see you, Christy. Good to see you, Lori. Great partnership. Thank you, everybody, for coming. <laughs>